dry conditions, clouds in the sky, Belgian flags dropping from the sky before the start of the race. Belgian flags being waved by Linkin Park, the rock group who had their name all over the 00 Mercedes, but it was Audi and Rennie Rass leading on the charge down to Eau Rouge, right behind them, the Lamborghini of Mirko Bortolotti. As you can see, Bentley and Ferrari in the mix. You have to look further back to find the Mercedes. They were struggling at the start, but there they came. A five minute pounce had been to be served in the pits by six of the Mercedes. Four of them came in on the opening lap. The disadvantage they had from it wasn't so great because that Ferrari, the 333 Ferrari from Rinaldi Racing in the gravel caused a full course yellow. And so did this incident, the 77 Porsche coming out of the pits with Kevin Estra clattering into Motoaki's Ferrari at the crest of the hill from Radion. A little limp there, sore leg for Kevin Estra. For, for Giancarlo Fisichella, the ex-Formula 1 racer, he knows his car's out of the race. On the right of the screen you can see it, and Motoaki is OK, but the barriers certainly weren't. A long period while they were fixed. When the field was released, it was the BMW from Row Racing, number 98. Ahead, you couldn't see it, but right behind was the McLaren. So close was Komilero Gar. And the car that lit, was leading the Pro-Am class was third, the black, yellow and red Porsche. Uh, coming into the pit stops, uh, and then one of the teams that came good in the Audi camp was the Phoenix crew getting ahead with their number six car of the entries from Team WRT. The 50 Ferrari actually led the race very briefly in that opening stint, but Massimo the Torres took the car over from Pierre Guidi, put it in the gravel, and that set the car back. It was to go on to, to get towards the top 10, number 30 in the tyre wall, and that caused another full course yellow. That was the Team Parker racing entry. The Sun made a late showing after a grey evening, and uh, as sunset went to nightfall, waved yellow flags out on the circuit. Incident aplenty, but it was a question of calling the shots right. If there was a full course yellow, you had to time your pits all right. Rear damage, the number 28 Audi. Yes, that went on to third place, but it was an agonizing slow lap into the pits for that to be repaired. Lost a lot of ground. The fireworks came out. The concerts were absolutely fantastic as night fell on circuit spa Francochon, partying on the train and off the track. Andy Suchek in the Bentley camp, all eyes on the screen. His car, the number eight Bentley, going very well indeed. But the 98 and 99 BMW crews also right in the hunt. The 99 car was the one that turned out to be the preferred option. And uh, you can see there Alexander Sims patting him, uh, being patted on the back as the 24. Uh, Bentley is removed after a clash with the barriers at the top of the hill. Another chance for the safety car to be out. Another chance for the team to use the full course yellow to make their mandatory brake trains they had to do. Normally takes some five minutes, but you have less track relative position loss when you have a full course yellow period. Got racing all over again. It was where the teams placed their cars. Great shots. Mechanics sleeping. Well, they have to do it sometime, but flashes of sparks from the cars through a rouge. Time-honoured fashion. Bentley going increasingly well. This was a the, cha the brake chains being affected very comp competitively by the BMW crew from Row Racing. A little oil on the track and it caught out the number eight uh, Bentley that was uh, challenging for the lead of the race. Wolfgang Reif going for a relatively harmless uh, spin up at La Source. The oil had been dropped by the Ferrari we saw at the side of the track just two corners before. Obviously got onto his tyres. Next time he had to brake hard, round he went. And then coming to the pit lane, oh, overshooting the garage. It wasn't a great moment for Wolfgang Reip, and largely he was kept out of the car, less experienced by far than Maxime Sule and Andy Suchek. And they were the two drivers that uh, Bentley rested their hopes on. The number seven sister car lost ground with an incident and fell way down the order, fought its way back into the top 10, 20 by the end. Strange thing happened down at Acker ASP, but luckily it wasn't their lead car, it was the other car. The wheel gun sheared during the pit stop. Super speedy recovery from the mechanic. But here was a, not a recovery, this was a clash. Jasmine Jafar in the number 84 uh, Mercedes clattering against the 0 0 with Yelma Berman going through Eau Rouge. You don't want to do that. The rear end of the 84 car somewhat clattered. They got it back to the pit. In fact, the car kept on going for some laps. But now it's a question of Bentley watching what BMW was doing and radioing what they were doing at their pit stops and vice versa. The two teams that got to the top, Bentley and BMW, duking it out and trying to work out who was going to come out ahead. But then the rain started to come down. This was absolutely key. But the number six Audi running in third place, Christopher Mies, stayed out too long on his rain tyres. One of them exploded, it ripped off some fuel lines and set the car alight. But then the, this was an absolutely extraordinary moment in the race. Bentley couldn't believe what they were seeing. The 99 uh, BMW tucked in for a second brake change. Said it was for security reasons, but it didn't matter. It mattered not. They managed to be so competitive when it was wet, going slightly better in the greasy conditions and the number eight Bentley that they were able to 
not lose too much ground and eventually work their way back into the lead of the race. But conditions were so, so difficult. Already front end damage on the Team Praha Ferrari. And then right towards the end of the race, that's the 98 car still running in sixth place at that point. Changed onto wet weather tyres and now had to wait the 99 car that went on to win the race for clear track ahead of it in the pit lane to put it in front of its garage. There was the number 50 Ferrari going for a spin. What you can see is the carcass, the tyre has come off one lap too many, clearly for passing the Taurus in the number 50 Ferrari and the rain tyre gave up. The busiest man in the Bentley garage was the man on the right, who was their team meteorologist, spent his whole race in the final four hours running backwards and forwards, telling the crews and the engineers what was happening, what was coming weather-wise. And this was the driver, the blue Ferrari getting clouted there, punctured. He was leading the AM class, the 51A, of course, the Ferrari very, very easily indeed. And then the whole lap with the car falling apart off the rear puncture. 52, that wasn't the car that made it to the end of the race for Duncan Cameron. The clatter with the barriers was just the end of it all. And then, of course, at Spa, you have the two pit lanes, the upper one and the lower one. So any visit to the pits takes a terribly long time to run the way through. We've got to the final driver change, just over one hour from the end of the race. Blue sky, sunshine, dry tracks, but that was another roll of the dice. The rain came back at spa Frankshaw, and how it came back, Bentley giving chase. They held their car, they didn't think they could get the pit stop done in the 1 minute 55, you have to be beneath that or above two minutes 15. And for the cars still coming in on their dry weather tyres, they went skating. And that was an unsafe release from the, BM, from the Mercedes that was up to third place. Looking on the screen, the boss of the car that was chasing it, that's Jerome Polycon, boss of ASP, and that meant the 88 car, his car, went up into second place because a drive-through penalty for an unsafe release for the 86 Mercedes dropped it down. You can see four on the screen as it makes its drive-through penalty. 16.30 on the clock. Here is the car coming through to take victory. The Union flag being held out for race winner Alexander Sims, the chequered flag for the 99 BMW. M6 GT3 and for Philippe Eng and Maxime Martin, that meant the world. BMW victory, the first year with the M6. And it's a winner here in the Spa 24 hour, the toughest race in the block pan calendar. Alexander Sims, applause all around. And it's gonna be goodbye from us. What a fantastic total 24 hours of Spa-Francorchamps. See you again in 2017.